sorry guys for this uh, inconvenience. Uh, All right. but I had some trouble with the internet. Okay, guys. <laughs> but, you know, okay, so <laughs> I am back here with Hoda uh, Afifi live in Cairo and we're going to do a tour of the pyramids. Sorry, everybody, about the technical difficulties, uh, but Hoda and I are the trouble sisters, man. Every time you get the two of us together, we're causing problems always, aren't we? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let you go, Hoda. So please okay. lead away and show us the pyramids. So live from Cairo okay. at the Great Pyramids of Giza. Oh, welcome back, everyone. We're going to get closer to see uh, the Great Pyramid. And I have to tell you that we're really super, super lucky today to be here. As, as you can see, there's no tourists whatsoever. Um, usually this place is packed with uh, tourists. Uh, the opening hours from eight in the morning till four o'clock so it's always uh, busy you would be seeing lots of people climbing to enter the great pyramid and in another queue by the second pyramid right now we're in between the second pyramid and the great pyramid i'm gonna get closer to give you an idea of how big is the pyramid how big are the stones uh, it took almost 2.3 million stones for building the great pyramid the stones, they are in be between 2 to 15 tons in weight, 2 to 15 tons in weight. The total height of the Great Pyramid used to be 146.7 meters. It used to be the tallest man-made structure in the world. The total height of the Great Pyramid right now is almost 138. So what happened from 146? 238. We've got different theories. If you look up there to the top of the Great Pyramid, you will see that the top, the capstone of the Great Pyramid is missing. We have different theories, one of them that it just got deteriorated. The other theory that once the pyramid was finished, it used to be covered with uh, beautiful uh, gold. And when the pyramid was looted during the uh, ancient time, the top, the, uh, top uh, was uh, stolen. The golden top was uh, so we're going to get closer as I would like to share some more information about the interior of uh, the uh, Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid has at the moment two entrances. One of them is the original entrance. The second one was made during the uh, 12th century when the Arabs were ruling Egypt. They thought if they will go inside, they will find the treasures of the pharaohs. They made their own entrance, but nothing was found. When the pyramid was built, the three of them, they used to be covered, cased with beautiful limestone casing. We lost the limestone casing because of ancient earthquakes during the 13th and 14th century AD. There's only one surviving part of the limestone casing. So I'm going to get closer and I will show it to you. Usually the queue to go inside the entrance to enter the pyramid it starts from here, whole way to the entrance. The original entrance is the top one that has a triangle shape and it's almost 17 meters from the ground level. The other entrance that was made during the 12th century is where the two men are sitting up there. The Great Pyramid is facing the four cardinal points. And right now, we're at the northern side of the uh, Great Pyramid. If you get closer with me here, we will see the pyramid complex. The pyramid was a tomb and this whole tomb was used only for one person. And this person was the king. The king in ancient Egypt was divine, was considered to be the manifestation of God on earth. Egyptian made sure that the kings would enjoy their afterlife. The king did not just have a tomb, he had a whole complex. And the complex used to be consisted of the tomb, which is the pyramid, the mortuary temple, a causeway that leading to what is missing here, the valley temple. 
in addition to the gray pyramid to the east to the uh, eastern side we have one two three small pyramids we call them satellite pyramids and it is believed that it, it, it used to belong to the queens so queens were not buried inside the pyramid the great pyramid the uh, queens had their own tombs unfortunately the Motri temple is missing what is left is just the uh, um, ground and the valley temple hasn't been excavated yet if you look inside there to see the interior we can see that we have um, one two three burial chambers three rooms where the body of the king was meant to be kept the first uh, room is what we call the subterranean room this room was never finished and it was dug at the bedrock of the pyramid to go inside from the main entrance from the uh, original entrance you have to go down this is like a, a descending passage and it's 105 meter uh, uh, in length and then another meter eight meters that leads you to the unfinished room and about 28 meters from the same passageway we used to have a hole here that was covered with a square stone they moved it to find another ascending corridor about 39 meter that leads to another corridor that leads to another room which is known as the queen room mistakenly known as the queen room we thought that the queen was buried in here as well then we have another corridor this is what we call the grand gallery that leads to the burial chamber where the body of the king was once there nothing inside the the, the burial chamber except just for an empty sarcophagus made out of granite let me tell you that the pyramid was built out of limestone this limestone was quarried from the same area because people say like 2.3 million stones where they got this the where they got the stones from they got the stones from here from the same area they had a huge limestone quarry that's why they decided uh, to choose this place to choose this place for building the pyramid because it was easy to get the limestone they had to transport the limestone from another place i'm gonna get close so i i want you to see how big are the stones i'm almost i'm almost 152 centimeters and you can see how big are the stones you can see how big are the stones 2.3 million stones the stones are between 2 to 15 tons they were acquired from this uh, uh, location they were acquired uh, from uh, here another reason for uh, choosing the giza plateau uh, in addition to the limestone quarry is that it's almost like a hell it, it's it's up so being high it means that it's away from any possible floods and it means also that it's away uh, from any underground uh, water uh, it's rocky as you can see if you look here to the ground it's rocky which means that it's stable we're gonna take you now in a short drive to show you the rest of the uh, uh, pyramids we're gonna, get, we're gonna get closer so you can see uh, how close is the city to the pyramids uh, it's good to see a, a tour group coming to visit uh, we have some of eastern, eastern europeans uh, from ukraine uh, they come to visit the, the pyramid they usually uh, come for uh, what we call like a beach vacation they come to hergada they come to uh, the red sea um, just for a week or so and they come um, in a day tour to visit the uh, Giza pyramids and the Egyptian museum talking about the Egyptian museum it's a good to point for you the uh, gray structure that you can see up there there's like an electricity tower and behind it we have a gray structure this is the new Egyptian museum that is meant to be open 
as we say in Arabic, inshallah, if God willing, by 2021, this is going to be a great museum, the biggest uh, museum, the total cost for building this museum is almost 1 billion US dollar. The museum will have the whole collection of King Tutankhamun, all the treasures of King Tutankhamun, the coffins, the masks, everything that was found inside this tomb will be all uh, uh, removed to the new Egyptian museum, in addition to so many other objects. Um, so we're uh, expecting a great event by 2021. If anyone is planning to come to Egypt late 2021 or 22 to see the new Egyptian museum, let me tell you that the new Egyptian museum is roughly two kilometers from the Giza pyramid. So you can come and spend a whole day visiting the museum and the Giza pyramid. We're gonna get closer. As I mentioned before, it took almost 24 to 30 years for building the pyramids. And you might wonder, how did we know? Um, actually, our main and only source is Herodotus, the Greek historian who came and visited Egypt almost 500 BC, which means 2000 years after building the uh, uh, pyramids. And he mentioned that it, took, uh, that, that it took the Egyptian around 30 years for building the uh, pyramids. Also, we know that King Khufu, the builder of the Great Pyramid, he uh, ruled Egypt for almost 30 years. And according to the traditions of the ancient Egyptian, once any king got to the throne, they start building his pyramid. His pyramid was his tomb. And the tomb for the ancient Egyptian was the eternal house. Egyptians used to make their palaces, their houses out of mud brick. Mud brick, but when it came to their tombs, they wanted their tombs to last forever. They wanted it to last forever because they had a very strong belief in their afterlife. The tomb was more important than the house. The house is gonna last 20, 30, 50, 90 years maximum. Like King Ramses II, he ruled the country for almost 90 years. But one day you will die. So the house is not that important. What is more important is the tomb because the tomb is the eternal house. Ancient Egyptians had a very strong belief in the rest of life. And you might ask, wonder, why the Egyptian had this strong belief in the afterlife? What made them think that there is another life? The reason that made the Egyptian think there is another life was the nature. Everything around them, every, every day we see the sun. It rises, it sets, and it rises again. Every year we see the Nile flooding. During the summertime, the flood comes, covers the land with water, once the flood season is over, the water drops down. The next year, the flood come again. This has made the Egyptians think that everything goes on a cycle. Everything has a starting point and then restart. So they come to this life, they die, then they will have another life. But this other life is eternal, never ending life. We're gonna get really very close. I want you to see how close is this city to the uh, pyramids. If you ever come to Egypt, you'll be driving and all of a sudden you see the pyramids. There's a nice golf course, course here and you can see how close the houses. So, uh, Rahoda, can you tell us exactly how, how far is the center of Cairo? Because I remember it being about, what, a 20 minute drive, something like that? 20, actually when we came, Tara, we were really very lucky because when we came, it was um, during the weekend. So ah. during the weekend, the traffic is not bad, but usually it takes like 45 minutes from uh, downtown. And um, it's, it's roughly uh, 17 uh, kilometers. Um, it's around 17 kilometers from downtown, from Tahrir Square, from where the Egyptian Museum. So okay. instead of like uh, taking 45 minutes driving, from downtown, now people will take less than 
uh, people will take less than um, like five minutes to reach the museum and the pyramid. We're gonna go for a very short uh, drive to get you to the uh, best place where you can see the rest of the pyramids. Well, I think that one of the biggest surprises for me visiting uh, Cairo was on the way to the hotel, just going down the freeway and oh, over there, you can see the pyramids. There's all these apartments and then oh. <laughs> Just, uh, we're heading to a place that is called the panorama why it's called the panorama because this is the place where you can take the best panoramic view for all the pyramids and uh, this this place uh, um the the giza plateau was not just a place for for royals um, for kings uh, it's not just the king and his son and his grandson no um, they are high uh, officials, the royal family. You can see like a small little tomb up there. This tomb belongs to one of the high officials. So the people that used to serve uh, uh, the king, uh, they wanted to be buried very, very close to the uh, king as well. Right now we can see the second pyramid that belonged to King uh, uh, um, Kifrin, the son of Khufu. And um, if you look up to the top of the second pyramid, you will see part of the limestone casing that used to cover. So I want you just to imagine when this uh, three pyramids were finished and covered with beautiful limestone uh, casing. And if you compare between the first pyramid and the second one, you will be able to realize why only the Great Pyramid, the first one, was uh, uh, chosen to be the only surviving wonder of the ancient world. It's because how accurate and how neat the stones were placed and how good uh, we can get closer now. So if you look to the second pyramid, you can see that it's almost like a big pile of stones. There's only one entrance to the, uh, um, there's only one entrance to the second pyramid and it's very close to the ground level. To the other side, we will be able to see some more small uh, tombs. So we call them mastaba tombs that belong to the um, high officials, royal family anyone that used to serve the king. And let me tell you that about 70% of the tools here, they used to belong to the workers. So, so 70 tombs of uh, the tombs here belong to the uh, workers who built the uh, pyramids. And this is a good reason to make us um, say that the pyramids, this is what, what we call the uh, mastaba tombs. You can see them right now just rectangular shape tombs. We believe that the people who built the pyramids, they were not slaves. Uh, they were free Egyptian farmers. Free Egyptian farmers that used to, there's just a second, give me a second, yeah, yeah. Give me a second. Uh, Sarah, can you guys see the uh, new Egyptian museum now? Yes, uh, off of the distance, oh. it's, not, it's not super clear, but you can yeah. see the gray in the, there yes. you go, that, that gray building. Yeah, in the, so this is, yeah, this is how far the New Egyptian Museum will be. Yeah, not quite walkable, but really, really close. Yeah, it's around two k's. It's around two kilometers uh, uh, from uh, the, the Giza pyramids. Well, because Isis, of course, is named after an Egyptian goddess, so <laughs> it's appropriate to have my cat Isis joining us today. <laughs> so yeah, uh, talking about the the uh, the uh, people who built the pyramids, we think farmers um, that use uh, to work only four months a year. Why four months a year? Four months a year because this is the inundation, the flooding period. So this was their off season. The workers had no work to do. They used to come and they. They were well looked after. We found so many of the tombs of the workers. We found some of their skeletons, and it's a, one of the skeletons. And they uh, discovered that this person, while working, um, maybe he got injured and they treated uh, him. Uh, we know so many. Uh, we know so many. Um, information about the life of the workers. 
we found the area, the, the village where they used to uh, work. And um, they found an air, um, like very close to the village, like a big area that we think that it was like a big dining area um, because they found lots of stone seats that were dug uh, in the ground. So they believe that this was like their dining area. They found around this area um, lots of uh, like bone, bones, uh, like fish bones and, and meat bones. Uh, and this is a clue for us. Well fed. They went here for four months a year. Um, so they were also honored by the king as the king allowed them to be buried at the same cemetery where he is buried. Spot for the pyramids and we will know how many, we will know now how many pyramids that we have. It's a bit hazy today, but I mean, this is normal for for um, Cairo, home for 25 million people, lots of smoke, lots of pollution. So being hazy, I mean, we're, get, we're used to this. Uh, we're getting very close. Let me tell you that we have an event taking place now. You can see this black structure over there. To the left hand side, this is a squash uh, court. We have uh, squashes in Egypt, and uh, we have a, squa a squash uh, um, a championship that taking place. It started from the 10th of October and it's going to end on the 17th, so maybe today. Uh, it's uh, the, the end of this uh, a championship. And um, that's why during this, the three permits are well lettered. Uh, we're going to get closer. From this place, you can see the three permits. Khufu, Kefren, Menkaura. That belo the three permits belong to one family. The first one belonged to the father, the second one belonged to the son, the, the third one belonged to the grandson. Behind the little pyramid, which is almost 60 meters in height, you can see three little pyramids that belong to the queens. So from this spot, we can see six pyramids. But let me tell you, that's not, this is not it. We have another three pyramids behind the great pyramid. You cannot see it from here, but we will see it later on. So the total number of permits that we have in Egypt, how many? <laughs> if only in one spot, we have 12. How many? In one spot, we have nine permits, I mean. So how many, the total number that we have? We have almost over 100, 100 uh, permits in Egypt. In this place, at Giza, we have nine, but we have some other pyramids in different places, like in Saqqara, we have over 18 pyramids. At Dahshur, we have over three pyramids as well. Lahore, Fayyum, so many pyramids that we have uh, in Egypt, over 118. And as we said, because the Egyptian thought that they have another life, this has made them think that it was very important to have um, a tomb. When people come nowadays and say that permits were built by um, aliens, that make us uh, very frustrated and annoyed because we believe that they were uh, built by Egyptians, not 
by aliens. I'm going to tell you now the story of the pyramids. Egyptian lived in their afterlife. Everyone used to be buried just in an oval hole in the ground up till 2760 BC, when one of the pharaohs decided to have a unique tomb, a tomb that nobody else had. So he had his tomb. The tomb was dug in the ground, covered with a square platform. But instead of having just one platform, the architect, the genius architect who built the, uh, uh, this uh, tomb, decided to have six unequal steps, one on the top of another. So he ended up having what we call the step pyramid, which is a six steps. steps one on the top of another and it's 66 meter in height and this pyramid is about 20 k's to the south of the sea so it's older than the Giza pyramid towards the end changing the steps into a uh, again uh, it was the, the toward beginning of the fourth dynasty uh, king senefro the father of king uh, who decided to have his complete pyramid shape and why a pyramid shape a pyramid because the egyptian um the egyptian thought well, we're having just a break. So I think we've lost audio on Hoda. So give us just a second. Hoda, we can't hear you, hon. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. So before the, the, the Giza pyramid, the father of King Khufu decided to build his own pyramid, but it seems that they were not quite sure about the angle that they should use. So the first angle that they used was quite steep. So they kept building their pyramid. And once they reached the height of about 48 meters, they found that the body of this pyramid had lots of cracks. So they figured out that if they keep building um, the pyramid using the same angle, it's gonna collapse. So they had, to dis they had to reduce the angle. And this is what caused the pyramid to be bent. It's not triangle anymore, it's bent pyramid. We still have this pyramid up to now and it's almost 105 meter in height, it's still standing up to now. And it's located in a blade school that's sure. Learning from their mistake, they were able to build the first true pyramid in Egypt, the Red Pyramid, and it's almost 90 meters in height and it's still standing up to now. So we've got the step uh, pyramid, we've got the bent pyramid, the red pyramid, all of them were built, were, were built before the Giza uh, pyramids. And this is a good reason to make us think that these pyramids uh, were not built by aliens, because if they were aliens, they wouldn't have stayed 200 years in Egypt trying to develop their idea step by step, from just having an oval hole in the ground to a square shaped tomb known as a Muscova tomb, stepped pyramid, bent pyramid, and red pyramid. The Egyptians started having pyramids from almost 2000 BC, nearly till 1400 uh, uh, BC. And then later on, uh, they 
figured out that all these pyramids were cut, were looted, because they were obvious that the treasures of the pharaohs were hidden inside the uh, uh, pyramids. Later on, the kings decided to have their tombs cut into uh, the mountain. And this is the sort of tomb that you will get to see if you ever go to the valley of the kings in Luxor. It's very different. It's no more pyramid, it's just number of rooms and corridors, one after the others. As the Egyptians had strong belief in their afterlife, everything inside their tombs. So one tomb was discovered. We found everything that used to even history. You guys, it looks like we have lost my friend Hoda. Oh, there you are. Okay, Hoda. Sorry, we lost you for a second. Oh, okay. 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 Go for it. Okay. We're gonna go for we're gonna go for a very short um drive to get to the Sphinx. It will take us roughly five minutes. What, darling? What'd you to say? Get to the we're good now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The um the self signal is not so great out at the viewpoint area, unfortunately. Um, but typically when uh when we're out there when there are a lot of people around uh and there's tourism as normal, this area. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, this area that Hoda took us Maybe up. Maybe the signal is just this week. What's that? What? Yeah. I can hear you. Typically, this area that Hoda's at is it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and there's uh, there's a lot of camels. This is where they do the camel rides. So they have all the people that line up the camels, and then they do the. Um, photographs where you could photograph yourself in front of the pyramids riding a camel, which is a little cheesy, but we had to do it. And I have to admit that it was it was pretty fun. So that's the reason we're, we're take, we took a little bit of a chance sending her out into the desert to get you guys a beautiful view of that. So that's why the, uh, the signal is a little low. Are you still there, Hoda? Sarah, there we... can, you, can you hear me? I yes, can. Uh, we can see the queen pyramid. The little tiny ones? Yep. Hoda, we can see the small pyramids. There we go. Okay, so I think we've lost Hoda briefly while she's driving. She got back into the car with her friend and they're driving. Her. And the, 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 Well, we knew this was going to be a chance to try and see if we could we could do something a little bit different like this, but uh, for some reason the the cell signal is not great today. It was fantastic yesterday. So I hope you guys are enjoying our little uh, tour of the pyramids with Hoda. Um, she's going to jump back on right now. Oh, look at that. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> How about this? Okay. Can you see now the little pyramid? Yes, we can. This is better and the okay. cells is much better. Thank you. And thanks for everybody. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so this is a little pyramid, and like the first and second one, this one was meant to be covered, uh, coated with a beautiful granite. And let me tell you that this granite blocks that we have here covering the um, face, the, the, the face of the pyramid used to be cut from Aswan, and Aswan is almost 1,000 miles away from here. So we're leaving the little pyramid now, and we can see the second one that has the limestone casing. It's a bit de deceiving as from a distance, you might think that the middle pyramid is bigger than the uh, first one, which is not true. The base of the uh, second pyramid is 215 meters. The base of the first one is 230 meters. The total height of the first one used to be 146 while the total height of this second one used to be 142. The second one belonged to the sun as a sort of, we believe that maybe as a sort of respect, the sun decided to have his father, uh, uh, his uh, pyramid. Uh, lower than his father. Uh, he decided to build his pyramid on a higher plateau, on a higher place. So be on a higher place, this is giving you the impression that it's higher than the Great Pyramid. See, there's only one entrance to the second pyramid and it's very close to the ground level and it takes roughly 10 minutes to go in and out. No hieroglyphs whatsoever inside any of those uh, uh, three uh, pyramids. Uh, unlike the Valley of the Kings, when you go to the tombs and see all the beautiful uh, paintings and colors and hieroglyph, uh, unlike uh, some of the later pyramids uh, located at Saqqara, uh, where they are more humble uh, size-wise, but they're well decorated from inside. So we're getting closer. You can see the second pyramid. So the little pyramids were smaller in size, but they were well decorated from uh, inside. If you ever to go inside the second one, it takes roughly uh, uh, 10 minutes. You got to the entrance is like one meter by one meter and you got to go down for like five minutes and then a short passageway and then another corridor. We, right now we can see the, uh, these blocks of stones. Uh, they are the ruins of the Moor tree temple of uh, King Kefren. And to the other side, we can see the, right now we're to the southern side of the Great Pyramid. And to the southern side of the Great Pyramid, 1954, some small found burnt under the ground. Those boats were made out of cedar wood, were used during, this is the picture for the boats. Um, we found one of them 1952, and when we found it, it was all in pieces, 1,200 pieces of cedar wood. This cedar wood was imported from Lebanon, 2,500. They found it all in pieces, and it took roughly three years to be able to reconstruct this boat. The boat is 50, it's 42 meter in length, and it's in a perfect condition. This boat that we have right now is known as the solar boat, as they thought that the king might use it for, for his journey with his son, a god. But then later on, we found that this was one of the royal boats that was used by the king during his lifetime. And after his death, they decided to remove it and bury it here because the king might need it for his journey to the afterlife. The Great Pyramid was surrounded by five shafts that had five boats, and we only found two of them. And let me tell you that those boats would be removed to the new Egyptian museum. A few seconds, and we will get very close to the Sphinx. 
it's a, I know that it's a bit easy, but if you ever were to that, come here on a distance, you will be able to see the other pyramids. It, it's hazy, but I can see it. I mean, I don't know that the camera, if the camera would be able to get them or no, but um, from a distance, you can see the other pyramids in the horizon that belong to um, King um, Zoser, the Steppe Pyramid and Bente Pyramid and Red Pyramid. We can see now the causeway connecting between the Moor Tree Temple of uh, uh, King Kefren and the Valley Temple. And guess what? Guess what? We're getting very close, very, very close to the sea. You might be a little bit disappointed. Oh, then we can see it. Back of the screen. Yes, it's there. It's there. Yeah, we can see the thing. You might be a little bit disappointed that it's not as big as you thought, but I think this is because of in the pictures we always see the Sphinx and having the pyramids at the background. This is, makes you feel that it's tiny. If you think about it, when we get closer, the Sphinx is just a statue that was cut out of the world. Second pyramid, the Sphinx, a little pyramid. Can see no one at the pyramid side of the room might be also the only people by the Sphinx. Beautiful. Um, now it's the month of um, it's the month of October, and this is the best time to come and visit Egypt. The best time day is from October up till the end of April, before it gets before it gets um, very hot. So if you ever think of coming to Egypt, I would highly recommend that you come any time between October and end of April. This is the best time when it's not too hot. And if you wonder how hot does it get? Oh, here is the camel, the gray pyramid. The second one, the third one. If you wonder how hot does it get during the um, summertime, um, in Cairo, we're talking about 40 uh, plus, but it's quite humid. In Upper Egypt, in Luxor and Aswan, where the Valley of the Kings and Karnak Temple and um, Abu Simbel, um, it gets to 45, 48 uh, some days, but it's, it's a dry heat. And uh, dry heat, means that in the shadow you cannot really feel the heat while in Cairo it's more uh, humid we can see some seats here those seats are used for the sound and light too that we have here every night by the sphinx We have sauna light show in different parts of, of the city. We have sauna light show at Koenig, sauna light show. At the Temple of Isis, but the best one is a sauna light show at the Temple of Ramses II at Abu Simbel. The sauna light show here, maybe one day, Sarah, uh, we can uh, broadcast it live so people can can watch it. I mean, it's very. Yes. Can you hear that? I think that would be fun. Yeah. 
I, I can come one day here at night and I mean the lightning is really very good. The the, the sound is maybe a little bit cheesy, as you say in America, a little bit corny. <laughs> doing it though, I feel now even the COVID thing they're still doing the light show. Yes, we we can do the, we can do the sound. I mean, I can come in and then we can just set it live. And uh, for our friends, so they can watch it, and uh, they will watch the Sphinx uh, talking and narrating the story of building the pyramids. I think that's a great idea. Give me a few seconds, and we will get to the best place where we can see. We will get to the best place where we can see. Which means that the Sphinx was once painted 
but because for so many years it was covered with sand, the sand caused this sort of erosion for decades. Hydrocarbons have uh, uh, formed a small timber that was built and it was dedicated to the uh, Sphinx. Next to the Sphinx, we have a small timber. This timber is known as the Valley Timber or a, a, a place where one of the most important rituals used to take place. Outside, was the outside of the Valley Timber the tent used to sit for the mummification to take place. So they was the king god, they he washed the body, purified the body, then the mummification would take place. Why? was very important. Again, he had a very strong right that it was very important to have the body mummified so the soul would be able to uh, acknowledge the person and give him a chance for the outcome of life. The mummy of the king was to be mummified outside the tent. Then they take the mummy inside the body temple, where a very important ritual used to take place. This ritual is known as the opening of the mouth ritual. When they touch the mouth of the mummy, believing that when they do this, it will allow the king to speak, eat, drink in his own life. They touch the nose, you can smell, you can see the ears, you can uh, listen, and then once they finish this ritual, the opening of the mouth ritual, they would take the, the mummy and they would walk of the way on a fierce way. At the end of the first way, we used to have the victory over the poultry timber. They do the last ritual and pray. The king and they take the king to be buried inside the tomb, which is the pyramid. And this is what we call the pyramid complex. So this is Show you something funny before we leave the area. Guess what? What is the best place if you would like to come and see the pyramids at night time? It's Americans would be happy. It's Pizza Hut and KFC just over there. We have Pizza Hut and KFC, and they are overlooking the pyramid and the thing. So if you ever come here at night time, you will be able to see a free sound and light show. So Sarah? Well, Hoda, this has been absolutely magnificent. What a wonderful thing to share with us today, your incredible tour guiding skill. So I hope everybody out there who has been watching today has really enjoyed our time uh, with Hoda. This is just a small taste of how wonderful she is as a tour guide. She's got so many skills. And I have to say, Hoda, one of the best things I think I've ever seen a tour guide do was the day you uh, decoded hieroglyphics for us. That just blew my mind. So um, I, I just wanted to let you guys all know that if you have enjoyed this tour with Hoda today, we have put her PayPal address into the, the post. If you're interested in uh, thanking her for her time, you can just drop a little PayPal tip if you'd like. Even a couple of bucks is just fine. Uh, just to thank her. And I want to thank her uh, very much. Are a superstar, and I can't wait to see you again, my sister. Mwah.
thank you so much and uh, i hope that you enjoyed the the uh, tour and, and sorry for the uh, sorry for the uh, internet uh, disconnection well you know what uh, considering that we're doing a live tour together from about 7000 miles apart this is okay <laughs> and let me tell you that this is my first virtual tour ever this is very new and I think I might be one of the very few, if not the only one and the first Egyptian tour guide to do a virtual tour. So thank you for giving me the chance. Thank you for your uh, audience and followers to coach and encourage. And if we cannot get to tourists to, and, and travelers to come to Egypt, and I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're happy to get them to come and, and see it, even if it's virtual uh, tour, um, hoping that one day they'll be able to come uh, back. So thank you so much for giving me this uh, chance. and. Yeah, um, uh, thank you for those people who stayed late at night to, to watch it and, and hope to see them uh, soon uh, in Egypt. And just before uh, I go, uh, I would like to thank my dear friend, uh, Hint. Hint, can you turn the camera? Yes. Sarah, can you see us? No. Yeah. Unless you look a lot like a Sphinx, I can't see you. <laughs> How about now? There we go. Hello. <laughs> and Hello just being, uh, and just being really very supportive. And, and this is our second time to come try trying to test uh, the virtual tour. She's been driving. And yeah, so I would like to thank her for her time and, and for her effort as well. My pleasure. Yes, thank you so much. It's been really lovely to have uh, to have both of you doing this wonderful work. So thank you for bringing Egypt to everybody's homes. And hopefully we can think of some other wonderful things that we can do to share Egypt with everybody here in the United States and, and other places too, Australia, Ireland, all the people from around the world watching tonight. So thank you so much, Hona. Now we can do together. All right, I'll talk to you again soon, Hona. Thanks again. And thanks to everybody else for taking the time to watch tonight of the Great Pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx. Uh, and again, if you're interested, the PayPal address for Huda is uh, in the link to this video. And uh, we're gonna be more fun on Adventures with Sarah this weekend to tune in for more cooking, interviews, and virtual travels. See you again soon, Hoda. Ciao. Ciao, bye.